Good afternoon and welcome to Behind the Stage with Chopa Complex. I'm your host, Reese Paul, the marketing coordinator here. And if you've joined us previously, you know that along with our executive coordinator, Mr. John Arnold, we have been introducing our team to everyone, talking about their roles and um, just their functions at Show Park and how it just contributes to the bigger picture. Today is no different. We are joined by our maintenance coordinator, Mr. Miguel Kisto. And today we'll be getting all into his very, very important function at Show Park. Um, Miguel, Mr. Arnold, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Um, I think I'll, 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 I'll start the ball rolling, the opening ball. Um, I think it's still one of the things we want to do today on this particular program is to debunk a number of things that are normally said. We live at Shaw Park in terms of how we work there, and uh, we would know. And I think over the last few weeks, it's very obvious that people have come to realize a number of things about Shaw Park Complex and what it is we have been doing for the last few years. As a matter of fact, I just got a call from a, a, a very noted professor at UWE who told me that he was looking at our, our programs and the, how impressed he was with the work at Shaw Park. He didn't even realize that Shaw Park had all that going on. So first off, um, I want us to debunk, the first debunk I want us to get rid of is that Shaw Park is not sinking. There's no evidence that Shaw Park is not going to be with us in a few years. I think early o'clock, let, let's start with that, then we'll talk a little bit about the, the, um, the chiller system which we have just repaired. I'm purposefully doing this, um, and we'll talk a bit about what it takes to maintain the, the, the premise, cost of ownership, and um, we'll take it from there as we move along. So first of all, I think, is to debunk this whole idea of show park is, is going. All right. Well, good afternoon. Um, well, to address that. There's no evidence to suggest that Shaw Park is sinking in any way, form or fashion. Um, we have been through a natural disaster. There was an earthquake, or what was it, about two years ago, something that affected you know, some seismic activity, and there was no evidence to even say that it was exaggerated in any way. So there was, there, there's nothing. There's nothing as far as we can observe at this point. So Shaw Park, um, within the last five years, I've been able to be there, and it's not sinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I thought that you would have elaborated on this. No, 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 I think, well, you know, I, I threw that as you have been bold to kind of um, get get the thing going. So, Kisco, I think one of the things we have to be honest about is that for such a big facility, it will require constant maintenance so can I expand on that for me well certainly um being the destructed as it is the super structure as it is um having holding a capacity of plus or minus six thousand people if you want to round up which is standing room and etc to that are uh, you looking at about a tenth of the population of the day could be held in that structure so it's a super structure the cost the cost the the Utilities cost that you know, I mean, in terms of your power, in terms of just utilities alone, power, water, um, would be a considerable amount, right? We're looking at servicing 80 bathrooms, we're looking at, at you know, cooling a structure that holds 6,000 people as body heat plus equipment. You know, it, it's it's pretty big, it's, it's the largest building in the English speaking Caribbean, right? Fit for purpose, right? Um, so with six meters in rooms way in excess of 86,000 square feet on the outside, you know, it, it, it's, it's big. Um, so it does take that level of investment and constant maintenance, right? Constant maintenance in terms of the AC system because it's, you know, we it, it exposed to sea blasts where it is physically located. The, you can't stop that. You can mitigate those effects where you can't stop the actual sea blast, right? 
we've taken extensive steps with cooperation from the different divisions and, and, and um, also a bio instruction is now um the secretaries at the time and all the only movers and shakers were able to acquire a new basic system because the old one really succumbed to uh, the harsh environment um the easy system being the backbone of the heart that, that, that's systems. the chiller yeah that's like the heart we normally call it the heart of the building that's three 250 ton school chillers right it's a big fridge, right? And and this is constant. There's, there's no there's no on and off button, is it? Because because of the large space that you have to cool, once you get going, it's to keep going. That's twenty four seven. So it takes a lot of energy, a lot of skill, a lot of um, very good equipment. We were really blessed to have um, you know some very reliable contractors working alongside the partners, us, right? Um, and but those those are the kind of challenges that we have. We have we have maintain of course just because of the the chair size of the entity we deal with right um it's a multi-facet facility it can it can the volume speaks for itself the actual land space on the outside speaks for itself here so we see in the uh the chillers right so you can speak to what it, what it is that um everyone's seeing this is all contractor uh mr um, Rakesh, so, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, but yeah, basically kind of yeah, showing. So limited. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they'll be going through the flow lines here. So this is what they, they, what you see in there is the new chiller, the new three 250 tons chillers. And what this stage that they are right now is tying those lines, tying those lines to the new chillers. And the chiller, chillers have been coated triple in a in polymer uh, it's a lot of black steel that we're using as far as the piping goes we'll switch on ppc to black steel which gives us durability which mitigates any any uh, incidence of leaks right with uh black steel um we have upgraded from schedule 45 and schedule 80 pvc so we want as much metal as possible to deal with the harsh right. conditions and cool it's coming through there but i think um, i think it's still what you need to probably also again re-emphasize as we align is the critical element of this time in putting in the new chillers. One of the things we did was to learn from the first in that if you don't treat the chillers to deal with sea blast, you won't get the length of service from the chillers. I think you need to, to speak to that again. Well, that is correct. And what happened is that um, we inherited a system where it was open to the elements. And at the point in time of inheriting the system, a lot of the damage would have been done. It's, we're looking at salt, we're looking at humidity, moisture, wind, you know, all the perfect conditions for an aggressive corrosion scenario. Uh, so the, a lot of the electronic components would have succumbed to that, a lot of the housing would have succumbed to that. But we fought. We fought a good fight. We tried to mitigate the effects of that corrosion as much as possible. Um, with as a um, rigorous uh, maintenance program that funding would have allowed at the point in time. Until um, it held out for it held out for five years from in excess of five years, I should say. But what we inherited, um, we had to close it out. The decision was made to change all the system to brand new materials. We had a very good contractor that said in Pasama Limited. They were able to install, supply, and go into the old system with new insulation. Yeah, uh, talk, talk about the pump room. I, I know we're moving, but let's talk about the pump yeah. room where we have the water. Pump room now. So yeah. This is this, this fuels all the domestic water throughout the building 80 bathrooms throughout the auditorium. We have the Major electrical incoming room right now. That's the main bus coming to us. So this is powering all the drivers, it's powering all the stage equipment, lighting equipment, sound equipment, as well as the domestic lighting. Way in excess of 700 upstairs. What we're looking at there now is the handler, these are the lungs of the building that spread it all throughout the building. We have 23 of those handlers, and that is when the cold water comes through there and is 
sent throughout the distributed and then throughout the building to keep 6,000 people nice and keep it clean. That's another generator here, here CPAS, and completed job by the Salah Limited and the new chips plant that we have. I think I think it's so. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, I wasn't hearing too sure there. I, was, I wasn't too sure. Uh, yeah, Kislo, I think what we have to emphasize here again for for stakeholders, patrons, and also those who are going to use the facility. I think critical. Um, is the emphasize the point that if the chiller breaks down, then our service cannot be executed. And that's why it's so important for us that we pay attention to making sure that the AC heart, the heart of it, the chiller, is maintained. And in this case, thanks to the THA for, for providing the funding to replace the chiller. That is, that is uh, pretty accurate. I was just thinking about something that people they tell them to us that it is. In that, based on the design of the building, not much of a fresh air intake. So the, the, the chiller is Santa Mo, you know, by the way, I don't know. Well, there's no other way. There's no other way. The building is pretty much obsolete. Okay? Um, but the battles was great, and we really, really did get some support support from from the THA in the position, and we have taken steps to in order to ensure that we don't get a repeat of what we have not inherited. So we are really confident that we are really going to get ten years plus out of this out of this future with a rigorous maintenance program and. You know, the good hands and the good um, aesthetics of the contractors and the THA as well. You'll be as you get it. Um, yeah, yeah. one of the things is to, I don't think many people realize that you came to Shaw Park with a great history of understanding facilities and so on. Um, I think it's important that we give credit. I think just just tell our viewers a, a bit about your your stint in you know in in other countries, um, and and the kind of work you were doing because I think when when people study Shopa, they must understand it, it is a group of solid professional people that are working as a team. Risa has brought a brand new life into the marketing, all right, and she literally like took the baton from from Corey's running and finishing the lane um uh fabian i mean has come with all this knowledge from working in other similar theater spaces um and 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 well my own self what whatever i came with but but tell our viewers <laughs> tell our viewers um a bit about yourself and why your competencies was so greatly aligned to what it is we want to do at Shopa. Well, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Prior to, prior to SPC, um, in the center, uh, from here you mentioned the AC, the AC unit in the um, central, also uh, the central bank of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I was one of the one of the engineers inside there. And what's happening is that um, there's a particular floor that you see, there, there must be no interruptions. That's the floor that, 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 that has a lot of the data and that kind of stuff. There must be absolute, there's not, there's a, there's a separate AC system for that and there wow. must, it must, it cannot ever, cannot ever. You know I mean, the finances, the, I, I don't want to get in too much of what is stored there. Yep. You can imagine if it's, if it's in the central bank, the level of importance. So that was always a challenge because things do break down, you know what I mean? But you have to always have to think about what is at risk and what is at stake. And the, the show park itself is an investment in Tobago, in Trinidad and Tobago, but in Tobago itself as a, as a location. 
and an investment in the future investment in culture investment in use so it must always be that beacon and it has the same level as importance as my past in central bank and that kind of thing prior to that um i talk about international experience i did some stints in some uh various various countries various countries matter of fact i want to say that i didn't uh, there's no continent i didn't live on right um I don't want to bore you with too many details, but what I can, what I can. Feel free to bore us. Bore us. We look at we. So, yeah. What I say, I bring. I, I, what I try to do is bring it back locally to what's going on in the in the um in short part there. No, no, but you see, when the I international thing will give us. The international mm, thing will give us. There's a particular area. Yeah. So there's a particular area I worked in called uh, Equatorial New Guinea, Spanish-speaking island, of right. of um. West Coast Africa, and the this is this is out in the out in the ocean there, and the, the conditions are pretty bad. But there was this um, we're doing a lot of um, pumping, and we are pumping something to the effect of about two hundred fifty thousand tons of sand, and eighty barrels per minute. You know, huge pumps, huge pipes. Yeah. Velocity, lots of, lots of drag, lots of, talk, lots of plenty of physics. Just to, just to sum it up. But this particular generator that we were using was, um, and I guess I could code the name, the SDMO generator. It couldn't shut down. It could shut down. The project would shut down. It billions of dollars. Uh -huh. I just had to. What, what I'm saying, I'm saying that to say this. Um, in my experience, I have seen equipment put to the test, and therefore I have, was able to bring that expertise to Shore Park not just reading a brochure or not just speaking to a supplier but seeing it work in the field under the very worst conditions the harshest conditions which is why as you saw in the video we end up getting a generator that is encapsulated that is containerized from sdm made by sdm which is a french french principal company um so a lot of the exposure on the international circuit i was able to go to different um observe different walks of life different types of engineering chinese the chinese have a distinct way how they do with respect to things like scaffolding strengths of materials um lighting you know learn a lot from them with respect to gas um lpg gas you know Shantou, china i was able to you know all those kinds of mega projects we're talking like big money big money projects where time is definitely money right there's and there's not much room for error because error in those harsh environments means fatalities. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Fatalities. Yep. Um, and we couldn't afford that. So you were so you were able, you were asked to the, the, the environment um, pushed you to having that level of expertise whereby your life depended on it and, and the life of others. And this is what I um, Yes. Yes. Yeah. Shaw Park, and I was, I, I believe I am successful in bringing it to Shaw Park, where with the liability of 6,000 souls in that building, everything has to be right for them, from the janitorial side to the water side to the facility side, in terms of lighting, um, in terms of fire exit, egress points, muster points. You have, and then you have high profile people in there too. We have had, we have had um, the, or the, Kusek, Chief Ad, we've had um, ministers there, um, you know. We've had the Prime there. Minister there. Prime Minister the there, you know. There. And then you have in foreign, a lot of foreign people there, people from China, people from Cuba, we have yeah. a Cuban contingent, yeah. right? And the, and the responsibility of one is the responsibility of all, right? Um, and I want to, you know, so, so, that level of importance of, of human life and you know hsc and how important assets are the continuity of assets the lifespan of asset lifespan of assets sorry right and what we need to do to to ensure that no matter what be it budget be it i mean we, we want to rerun a pretty lean team there at show Park. you know we we are a pretty lean unit um the facility department you're looking at it <laughs> You know what I mean? But it doesn't it doesn't take us away from the job that we have to do. It doesn't take us away from the job we have to do because whether it's me alone or not, they still have three thousand people. The Shana Shana show is what forty two hundred, 
Winston no, Ashkin. 36. That's 36. 3600, 3, right? Well, I count some I count some people in the car too, in the car park too. Right? <laughs> or car park car park holds three to four hundred cars comfortably. Yeah. Like you can actually decentralize Scarborough and yeah, park, no, park my show. Yeah. Right, you know what I mean? But but this is what I'm saying. So it's a lot of responsibility and therefore every aspect of someone coming there, you take custody of that person. So in the international experience as well, you know, you're always been you always have the custody and sometimes that custody is 100 to 150 people at a time you know one mistake by you could trigger off a train reaction and affect you know hundreds right and we talk about harsh offshore environment here that's that's what it's sometimes in the middle of nowhere sometimes in the jungle you know language barriers you name it tobago is a lot nicer <laughs> yeah right? well i mean that that's a very interesting story i like what we said you know, you could bore us with those stories, man. Just tell us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Risa, you, you wanted to shoot something. Right. I know. Okay. So I know that we've been talking about the building itself and everything internally. And I know, Miguel, that you're very passionate about the outside of the building and us pushing that. Um, could you tell us what it is that we have to offer on the outside, the cumulative space of both the car park as well as green spaces that we have that I know you are passionate about marketing? So, um, so I'm the champion, the champion of Mr. Arnold and Mr. London, the Honorable Mr. London and others, but notably those two individuals. Shaw Park is way ahead of his time. Shaw Park is way, way ahead of its time in terms of its sheer size and use of land space. So therefore, the oh, I keep saying, advocating that the outside of that building is the beautiful, the inside is gorgeous, it's beautiful. It's, it's, a, it's a various nice spaces and the, the textures are nice, the colors are nice, the artifacts, the paintings, the lighting, you know, Shaw Park. I mean, who am I, who am I telling you? It's beautiful on the inside, but the outside, by extension, the, the, the first the landscape on the outside with respect to the you have the sea, you have uh, down by Coast Guard, you have the, the Scarborough, the harbor, port, all that as a backdrop with a beautiful circular building. And in building mechanics, circular gives you control. It gives you a 360 degree. There's no way you can look around in that general business district and not notice your park. The beauty is on the outside. A lot of the beauty is on the outside. The color coding is excellent, nice pastel soft colors. The landscaping um, done by Joe and Lisa, they do a real good job, right? Um, people have come to me for weddings. People have come to me and ask if, you know, how much you have to pay to get in there just to walk past the gate because it's, it's just a nice, nice space. The external, um, and I said, the parking can give you up to about 300, 300 cars parked. Uh, we were even in talk with the uh, cinema people, driving cinema. This is in, during the COVID time, early stages of the COVID time. Uh, when the cinema people were probably looking to do a, a drive-in movie outside Shaw Park because they have the space, they can accommodate it, right? Um, and it's, it's very picturesque, it's a very, 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 very picturesque building, right? And um, due to the COVID restrictions now, and I said Shaw Park was ahead of its time because we have the space to do things inside with social distancing, Oh, Could you just there. give us like an approximate square footage of the outside space? So, for example, if we have event planners or people that might be looking towards the future of having events outside, where you'd probably need more space to socially distance, um, they could have that information or just the number of because we have two sides, not just and not just the parking lot area. Yeah, we have two major green spaces the northern side and the south south southwest side yeah two major green spaces um one space the one on the northern side right is going to give you something in the middle of about thirty two thousand square feet just, that's just on the northern side and, and that's just green space so it means that your parking is separate from that so you can have a whole activity you, could be, you can do a football game you could have billboards you could do anything you want to play park anything you want to do in that green space right there um i mean are, uh, I... Go ahead. no 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 i was saying those, those are all great ideas um i think so far we have been pretty successful with 
utilizing the spaces for events. We have had car shows, um, we have had um, all inclusives, and you know, up upscale all inclusive, not bareback um, fets, um, all inclusives. Yeah, I say it as it is. Um, we have also had. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's that? How are you going to say a bit? Um, no, well, we you. get the gist. We get the gist. Um, the, we've also had um, shows outside. Remember, Tuko had the actual show outside. So I think I think the concept of bareback meaning, you know, there's no standard. He says it again. All right. Yeah. Um, what I want to go to is the area of challenges. And what I mean by challenges, you recall that in having events, one of the things you will make sure that is done is that we have people on standby that are critical to the success of the show. If there's an electric, electrical problem, um, a bulb blow on the ramps, then it means people can't see. If a pipe burst downstairs due to a toilet upstairs, we have a problem with leak. We need to get that mopped up and so on. And we have had all this, so you can talk. We've had instances where there's no open flame, right? In the in the in the in the um, concession booth. And there are people who break the rule, then we smell the food all over the the the, the building, and then we have to come and now tell them what we told them before. You can't do that. So talk a little bit to those kinds of challenges, because I think what I want to make the point is that in coming to Shaw Park and having an event, we do a complete exercise, not only on the technical side and the show, but we also do a complete exercise in managing the maintenance of the building at the same time. True. Um, well, to touch on that, a lot of the, we have had behavioral challenges. And now, as I said, it's a state of the art facility. And in order to preserve, preserving that asset. So the, just the mere chair that people sit on cost about three to $4,000, right? They made in Germany. It's not just a regular chair you can just pick up a department store. Everything in their cost is pretty, pretty pricey because of the quality and because of the nature of the building, what the building is earmarked for. Um, and that speaks to the way we, we take steps to allow that there's like, for instance, there's no food. We, there, there are policies and there are laws inside of the building, right? And one of that is food in the seating area. They don't allow food in the seating area because the janitorial costs associated with cleaning up that food after is, is ridiculous, right? But also, also, benchmarking with international facilities of the same caliber. Of the same caliber, right? So it's not just it's not just a it's not just a short pack thing that we just decide you want that. You know, around the world that's a standard operating procedure. Yeah. That's a standard of no food, no drinks, right? There's a concession area, and that's the, that's the beauty of it. The building affords an entire concession area, right? That can hold at about at, at any given time. I would say about sixteen hundred people standing on that area. Yeah. The bathroom right there for your yeah. for your convenience. Activity. You can eat and you stop you to sit there and not get to the bathroom. You know the the, the, the bathrooms are well spaced out. There are four bathrooms on that floor, uh, sixty something, sixty three stalls. Um, ability, um, touchless water distribution. It, 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 so it's a cooperation thing whereby the challenges we're gonna face or we have faced is people um, with a um, I want to say a full sense of entitlement, wanting to <laughs> strip it from you. This is a, so I, I'll give you a little study. I'll take a picture. Uh, uh, very really interesting. You know, somewhere that you work, and I think about you, somewhere that you work, and well, so this is a product of the table, and this belongs to the table, and if we want to eat inside it, we eat inside it. I say, yes, now, right there with you. But in order to ensure the integrity of this today's process, 
And we stop. We give it up. We give it up. It it kind of done in that you know it was so a lot of the back and challenges that we had with getting people to adhere to the to the to the rules of the of the, of the space, right? Um, operationally now we play. I don't want to use the word play, but we were we uh, had some gaps with the to design. And designed from the facilities that we had a number of uh, many discrepancies to put it mild, right? But these problems were still And that's why that's I say that's the that's design, design phase. And we have to deal with it really with the huge problem. But when you deal with it, you have to lay down the from the design phase, that is wrong. But then we inherit the cost. So we have had we have used some we in excess of twenty um, type and failures. Now imagine a show on a Sunday with two thousand five hundred people from the state of Minnesota. That's not what we're looking for. Imagine having those people inside it and the pipes. Give them water to use in the tree. They even had a, a baptism too with needing water as well. So it was a dinner that we needed a lot of water at the same time because everyone could need bathroom pretty much from the was a whole We have a success fight that just decided he wants to leave. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, you that know. Could, could a swimming pool of a leaf. So a chat that, that particular challenge. Is, is a pretty ticklish one. Operationally, I could fix it. It's nothing. Get in there, cut the pipe, isolate the water, fit back in a new pipe, and keep going. But then when you fix one, the other one erupts, and you keep going around the building. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now to yeah, battle yeah. yeah, that, yeah. yeah. bat yeah. that demon alone, to battle that demon alone, remember water, the, the AC system is based on water. <laughs> water, yeah. <laughs> so the water no, is not just in the Kisto, I have no problem for us talking in this honest mm. fashion and this honest way. Um another thing because I think I love these things to come up because the public needs to know. Um is you recall that when we had pipes, right? The taps, they were all sensor driven. So you had to put your hand, and you recall one one patron was not patient. At the time pre-COVID, you were already COVID. What, what did he do? Destroy it and destroy the whole thing because he got frustrated that he was putting his hand and didn't know how to use the sensor. And what did we do? We had to replace those sensor taps with normal taps. So the there again, push you, you can talk about up. how dealing with some cultural adjustment for some people. No, I we have to talk about these things. Because... Mr. Arnold, it's your description of these no. things. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I will tell you, I, I hurt, and I hurt in a different way. We had a fountain on the port, and on the day we were opening the fountain, Understand me. The fountain was being opened as part of the enhancement of the port. Right? So when tourists come off the cruise ship, they see something nice and la la la. And this is the the time I am I am at the opening. All right. Mr. Neil Wilson is chair. And people I saw them went by chicken right next to KFC, sat on the wall by the fountain and threw the bones in it in the launch program so you have to understand what i'm saying which is why uh, one of the things professor was telling me today boy you took a lot of licks yeah you had to take licks because these kinds of of standards that that makes you align with, with global with understanding how you you mix your cultural with standards and so on, I think it's, it's something that you have to constantly do. And so talking about it, Risa, 
it's important that we talk about these experiences. We, we can talk about people, uh, well, I don't want to go down that road, but- Yeah, you know, let's not go really, with me. We really have to be honest. Excrements and all of that. Because I want to know that people appreciate, you know, what Doc told me a while ago, he could not believe the amount of information he now has. And I think these programs are important for us to let people know these are the real challenges. People watch Chopin and they say, oh, nothing is happening there. Yeah, a lot of misconceptions. Right? A lot of misconceptions. And the way to do this, Kisto, is that all of us have to continue to spread the good news, the gospel of truth about SPC. That's what I'm committed to. So I have no problem talking about this. You know. But no, but, but go ahead. About the... I mean, the challenges. <laughs> Miguel right. wants to tell the, um, the concession corridor story. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I mean, if we, if we come, if we're coming out, I mean, if, 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 if I have the platitude to explain that, that, we have met challenges in terms of, and I say cultural things. A lady, a lady couldn't find the bathroom. Or she couldn't find the bathroom in time. Yeah. And so the counter, the concession floor, and decided just to go behind the counter by the concession. That's right. Now, you did, you did speak about cult, about my international experience. I was on a plane to Saudi, and a gentleman went into the into the into the laugh and had um had his business on the side of the toilet. He bypassed the toilet totally. The bowl he bypassed the bowl totally because. What he knew, and only when only when I got to Abu Dhabi itself and was walking down the street and realized that people know about the corner, they, they, how the how the pub, some of the public stalls are located is on the corner. Now well, I hear what you're saying. It was this is this is this is we talk about the Eastern world versus right. So people ought to know where the but but uh, but it, but we encountered it then. That's what I'm saying. We encountered it. And it I got you. To you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we have uh, we have. Over. We have high overheads. We have high, over yeah. and we have high overheads because share, just because of the sheer size of the building. But the building gives us um, that that multiplicity. The building building gives us that that advantage over any other building in English speaking Caribbean, and that comes with a course utilization. Um, you know, we've had challenges with people wanting to do their own thing. You know what I mean? Do their own thing. Yeah. And believe they are the, just by being a client, they are also the guru, and they want to interfere with things that really are, are um, selfishly do things. Let me just let me just pause you to clarify um, for our viewers, if it is that you're watching, we don't just have a no eating and drinking policy at Show Park. When it comes to our concession area, um, concessionaires are not allowed to um, prepare any meals, as in have any part of the cooking process um, in the concession area. And that is what um, Mr. Kisto has been alluding to, where it is that people would come and think that he could bring a deep fryer or popcorn and to do things like that. That's not allowed. We yeah. have we have tried, tried to strive to adhere to this amicably, and not because it's what we feel like doing. From an engineering standpoint, the building is not equipped to handle naked flames right. and There are there are no um, expeller fans. There's no grease right. trap. There's no chair intake to allow the 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 transfer of of that air out the building. No exhaust system. The concession store stalls, the six of them, are for finished products to distribute finished products. Right? There are some limitations, of course, you know, but but no naked flames. There are some exceptions, rather, but no naked flames because we can't. We don't have the we don't have the capabilities to deal with. There's no there's no overhead um, hood for fire extinguishing inside of that area either. Right? And as I say, you don't want to put though or everybody at risk. To fry some chicken, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Some and I, I happen to really like fries, right? But even I have to instruct people that listen. This is just because of the fire code that we under, and the building is not equipped for that. What that did was spark yeah. some innovation where you, as the client, now are allowed to because of how Shopak is structured 
and well designed, you can go on the outside and have your naked flame under the courteous watch of the fire watch and we have CCTV camera monitoring so we can see, you know, where your flame is and all that kind of stuff. And then you can transport the, the, the food, the finished product via elevator, via the service elevator to the concession store. People have done that. So, so, and I think people, your volume of fire is even bigger because you're on, you're on the outside, right? So it is, it's a, so the, the, a lot of the negative connotations we have got, they don't want them doing this inside and don't want them doing that inside. It's a lot of it is from the design phase where the building is not equipped or the building has not been designed for that. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. As a result, liability on the other hand too, we have a fire in there. We have art pieces. You know, any other building bar in the museum doesn't have that level of art we have. So we have a fire inside there. We have art, we have yeah, collectors. We lose some serious pieces. Yeah. We lose some, some serious pieces. pieces. Apart from the infrastructure, yeah. the intellectual property there is you you, you can't get yeah. back. You know, it's priceless. Yeah. Right? Um so all those things come and, into play. And and the problem with that is that you know with art pieces, even insurance money doesn't help you. But I mean you can't bring back an original piece of art, you know? Yeah. But um yeah, I know we're coming down to the end. One of the the things you, you spoke about that I don't want to miss is the issue of the size of the building and migration. One of the things we want to pay attention to is this issue of migration, right? Because I think because it is so big, we have to contain people within those spaces that they have rented, right? If it's not a large event, there's no need for you to think that you need to go to the balcony to find some other kind of improprietors act, you know? So we, we really try to see how best we can. Yeah, I like to say the truth. <laughs> we really try as hard as we can to see how best we can advise our clients no migration at all. So, I mean, Kisto, you can close off on that and then Risa will take us down to the wind up. All right. So the inside of the building, um, we have three tiers of, of seating. And because of the dynamics of the building, how it's tailored, how it's, the building can be tailored to suit your event. You have 200 people, you can have a nice space with enough space in to feature your 200 people, have a good view of the stage, have access to all the utilities, all the facilities, the concessions, so everything in your little space. And I'm saying little, but it, it, it's, it's huge, right? Because it, it's, um, we have six meeting rooms. But what happens is that when you are assigned a space, and pretty much you are assigned a space from a facility standpoint, that we know that we have 300 people going to be in that room. For migration purposes, when you move around that big building, there are lots of hidden, <coughs> well, not hidden, but there are lots of obscure passageways and, and, and bends and turns. The building is circular, but within that circular, there's some there's some there's some rigid shapes inside where even some of the best like myself can get lost for a minute or two right we've had incidents where people will take the elevator and then you, you, the children the children will find themselves migrating right that becomes a security issue now right that could become a security issue which is why which is as one of our standard operating procedures is that we provide supplemental security as to your size of event yeah for larger shows Sorry about that. I was eating. Yeah, no, we lost you. Yeah. Okay, and I called from ETH. Yeah. Um, let me call it what you show. <laughs> Tough crowd. Nah, they will call me first. Um, <laughs> right? Um, we, yeah, so it becomes a security when you have people wandering around. I think that he's probably getting yeah. another call. But Miss Donald, in the meantime, Sharon, Frederick, and Facebook would like to know what is a bareback inclusive? Would you like to clarify that term for what her? Is, what is a bareback inclusive? Yes. One that if, a bareback inclusive is an event where um where people 
don't have on clothes on their back. So basically, you know, in the context, when it was used, I meant so that we get pure clarity. It was just an analogy in terms of um, it's not going to be it's not going to be an event where you have uh, an unfortunate set of behaviors. All right, that would allow people being on the side of the, the building, you know, engaging in acts that may not be legal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it is really about having events that can basically adapt and adopt to those current rules about how we want to maintain the space as a classy um, space and one that has very high standards. I think that's the best way to put it. Um, Miguel, do you have any closing thoughts or? Are you hearing that? Yeah, you're no, no, we, we're hearing you. Yeah. yeah, we're hearing you now. I'm... But anyway, I mean, I mean what I could say is no, we've had a really good discussion. I think all those who were listening today would have really learned a lot. Sense of what we deal with um, and how we have to deal with it, the challenges of maintenance, and what a critical role it plays in having the building available for people to come now and execute their events. You can't underscore how important this is, um, just as how we underscore the importance of the technical, how we underscore the importance of the work. And let me take the opportunity of saying thanks to you, right? You're a one-man team, but really, you really flow inside. I want to say thanks to Risia for the wonderful job that she is doing. She's really, I, I, I gave it a compliment today. And thank um, uh, Fabian and the whole team. I mean, for several of us working at Shaw Park, for a building that requires a staff of nearly 25, I must say we're very close to the two fishes and five loaves or whatever, however the story is there. That, that really is miracle, miracle, right? Um, we, we perform miracles all the time. And that's because we possess passion, we possess competency, and we want, we have the will to see the best for events in Tobago. I will continue to say it as it is. Those are my closing comments. Thanks. Right. Um, we've been chatting for quite some time. I know that Mr. Kisto was a bit apprehensive and nervous. You definitely <laughs> could not tell. We've been talking for close to an hour. And I just want to thank you, Megan. And as usual, thank you, Mr. Arnold. Thank you to our viewers for looking. Um, on behind the stage, we've just been introducing you to our team. We all work incredibly hard, as Mr. Arnold said, and it is that we definitely have the best of the best in terms of each department. Uh, we have two more episodes coming for you next Thursday and the following Thursday, so be sure to look out for that. And also be sure to um, subscribe, follow all our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Our handles are all Showpack Complex. And of course, be viewing grassroots. Tobago Grassroots Talent. Uh, we just had an episode or second episode or third episode will be coming out next weekend. And just be sure to look out for all of the content and information that we'll be putting out. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.